come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, we ask all you do is uh, hit that like or subscribe button wherever you found us, even on Spotify. Oh, shit. That's right. Uh, We've been telling you you can find us everywhere, but now you really can. We find are us lying everywhere. for eight years. We've been lying to you. <laughs> You've made it. Yeah. Yep. Um, do we get that? Do we get that exclusive deal with Spotify? Are we only on there? Now? Are we rich? Oh boy. Uh, so you did a it, horrible job negotiating this, is what you're saying, Colin. Yeah. Okay. But now you can find us wherever. You can have your uh, uh, smart speaker, I suppose whose name I will not say aloud here in this room, <laughs> uh, you know, have her play the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Um, who are these people who are talking to you? They are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. John. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by. Holly. What did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a little movie called I, Madman. Ooh. Directed by... Ooh, Tybor Takish. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> That's also the last time we'll be saying that name tonight. Yeah. We'll just is, refer to him as the director. I was like, from now on, it's like a proclamation. Like, from now on, he'll be henceforth known as the director. Right. <laughs> uh, from what year? 1989. Ah, 89. A fine year, mm. I think. Written by, starring, anybody? Oh, yeah. Written by uh, David Chaskin. Who's that? You would know him. He wrote Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Ah. Yeah. That it? Um, he did. He likes um, monsters. Yeah, he did The Curse in 87. I don't know if you're familiar with The Curse. That's the Will Wheaton. Yeah. H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, what, that's the color out of space. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. interesting. Yeah. And Lance Henriksen's also mm-hmm. in that. Yeah, I, I read about it. I was like, hmm. Where's this movie? Worth checking What's out. What's it called? Yeah. The Curse. The curse. Okay. Yeah, it yeah. might be worth checking out. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it. But. I'm going to say we'll have to check out the trailer. <clears throat> uh, I have not looked at the trailer. No. We will check it out. There's another Nightmare on Elm Street connection in this movie. Is it? The Piano Man in this movie is played by Bruce Wagner. He was a Hollywood yeah. screenwriter. He, oh. uh, with Wes Craven, wrote Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Nice. Okay. And then he wrote Map to the Stars, the sure. movie that was made by uh, David. Or he wrote the book, Map to the Stars. Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. Cronenberg. Uh, okay. 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 All right, Holly. How did you come to this movie? Because I'm so, curious, because I've never... It seems vaguely familiar to yeah, me, I but I it's, have no experience I feel like it's one of those that, like... At some point, people have just kind of like come across it, but it's not really wound up in anyone's radar. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we uh, we all have like our lists that are ongoing. We all have our lists that we refer to. I was looking at mine trying to figure out my next pick, and I saw that, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> like, <laughs> right? I want to. We should all go through our list and just be like, <laughs> yeah. "Shit, I've written down." Where I'm just like, "I don't yeah. know what yeah. that is." I was like, "What the hell I, is that?" So I looked. At the, I looked at the trailer, and I was like, "Oh, well, this looks interesting." <laughs> right, that's why. <laughs> and then I was like, "Where did I find this?" And then actually, the person who recommended it, one of our listeners a while back, told me about it. He worded and reminded me. He's like, "Oh, you're finally picking it." I told you about. It. I was like, "Oh, it was you." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, one of our listeners. I do actually take your recommendations, yeah. and you know we we take note of them, and eventually we'll get to them. So. I've started putting like notes next to them of like like if there's like a notable actor in it, and that's mm-hmm. why I picked it. Like I started writing down the reason why it's like on my list points. like next to yeah, it because otherwise a good idea. because <laughs> i have a lot of things on my list that are just like i don't remember why i wrote it I down well, my list yeah. is gonna be was high like that's yeah. gonna be what's yeah. next to each of these movies yeah. i'm like i saw that Seriously, and it sounded like, good i yeah. was looking at my list like 80 percent of them like i've never heard of these right. <laughs> like where did i find these those are the best so, ones yeah, i'm glad uh, it was mr johnny new jersey novato judoku uh, wrote in and uh and recommended this one so he did write in again and thanking us for for finally watching it. Um, shout out to him, by the way. He's going through a hard time, so we love you. Well, you're, hopefully you're things turn around. Family. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, he hopefully suffered, this cheers you up a bit. He yeah. suffered a loss recently, so Aww. going through a lot. So we love you, buddy. Um, anyway, so back to the movie. I'm Madman. Tybert Takish. Takish. Also, he, like he uh, would be known to some genre fans for what? What's Gate the Gate is his biggest, his his most well known, I think. But I think he's most well known for a little TV movie called <laughs> Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Really? Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> wow. That's yeah, how he did I the know pilot. Him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? And uh, Spiders 3D. Anyone? Anyone? Okay. Oh. Uh, I mean, no, he's got like a. What, Police Academy, the series, anybody? Oh, geez. Yeah. The anybody? Se- there was a series? Anybody? Okay. No, actually, like, his his filmography is pretty entertaining. Because it's eclectic. very, like, 
It's very like sci-fi channel movie, and then to like Christmas Hallmark movie. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fucking yeah. fantastic. Hey, there's probably good money in that though, so right? good for him. You I know, know. Like, like he's like consistently working. Like he has a movie come out like every fucking year. Yeah, like, he's yeah. Still, yeah. He nice. makes a lot. Good for him. Yeah, but he didn't do the gate too, right? Um, no, he didn't do he gate. Didn't okay, the gate. Well, the gate. You guys have heard of the I've gate. Heard the gate. I've, he, I've had it on my freak show list for forever, but I've never seen it. I yeah. don't know what it's Wait, about. No, I think he did do it. And I've keep seeing the, the cover of it. The cover looks yeah. cool. Where isn't it? it like the gate written and cracking in yeah. the ground? Yeah, with the red eyes. Yeah, it looks yeah. really cool. Yeah, it looks cool. It's a movie that like the trespassers. Yeah, yeah, he did do it. Actually, not as good as the gate. But The Gate is like one of those movies that I think like all 80s horror fans saw at some point. Like oh, shit, I have not. And uh, and then it played on TV all over the place. And there's a lot of stop motion. What I remember is little stop motion monsters, which we get a little bit like, obviously, if he's going to do I Mad Man, you're like, yeah. okay, you still doing that stop motion thing? Yes, you yes, are. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah, Which were, yeah. now we have to see Spiders 3D to see if he resurrects stop I am motion curious. spiders. Yeah. I am curious. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm curious yeah. too, but <laughs> how much effort do you put into that curiosity? Yeah. I'm a little curious if he brings that stop motion into um, a Christmas miracle or a memory. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Rocky Mountain Christmas. Just, yeah. just, just reindeer. Stop an- animation reindeer all over. Right. This. That'd be great. And then like a hairy house and skeleton comes in and starts fighting them. I would That'd be great. That. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is, uh, so you said it's from 89, but yes. um, so who, like, is there anybody else that we would recognize in this cast? Yeah, so um, Jenny Wright is our leading lady, and you'd probably recognize her from Near Dark, which we covered a couple years ago, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's on her way to the wall. I don't know if she'll ever make it. <laughs> because she hasn't, <laughs> well, well, there's, there's at least one movie there, that, That's true. that she's done that she probably, at some point, show up on the Saturday That's Night Freak true. Show. She might have one other one. She might make it to the wall, so. Yeah, she um, was in The Lawnmower Man. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, no right. shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, no, I we have to one. do that at some point. <laughs> that movie's fucking insane. we did that already, but we right, didn't. Right, yeah, yeah, not yet. That, um, God, Jeff Fahey's in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like that's another one that it's like, why haven't we brought that? Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Some of them are just like two on the mark, like Lawn Mower Man. Yeah. Yeah. Never two on the mark. I, I just like I just assume <laughs> things that are obvious like that have already been covered. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah of course they covered it. Like I like we, we did Beastmaster last week. I honestly thought we'd already yeah. done. Yeah. That. We yeah. we always because we have for a while I think been going like off center. So now it's like yeah. some of those center movies. You know, what I right. consider center movies are becoming like <laughs> lost. Right. They're like oh you guys haven't seen you know yeah, yeah. true. Um, Jenny Wright had like a there was like a a brief period in time where she was in a lot of stuff it felt like mm-hmm. uh especially like in the genre um and maybe it wasn't like a whole lot I mean like you said near dark I mean basically then the, this was her like I think the only thing I could think was she had like a main leading role and then uh yeah somewhere after the lawnmower man I remember seeing her she was a groupie in uh, uh Pink Floyd the Wall oh, yeah. okay, was yeah. the first time like, I I recognized her after I had seen Near Dark yeah you know and then she showed up for like a scene or two in Young Guns 2 and then right. somewhere um, after Lawnmower Man, she just kind of like disappeared. And there was like, mm-hmm. it did kind of feel like the, in like the horror fandom, there was this kind of like, where did Jenny Wright go? <laughs> you know? And I'm like, I, you know, there's like this, um, I don't know. Is it do you a- think she's got enough to do like the the convention circuit? Oh, yeah, but, for sure. Yeah, but so. that's they for can't sure. find her or yeah. something. But I mean, she's still mm-hmm. obviously around. I remember it was kind of touching uh, watching the uh, Near Dark uh, special features mm-hmm. on the the DVD uh, where Adrian Pazdar was like, you know, Jenny, you know, we'd like to, you know, talk to you again. And where'd Aww. you go? And, you know, like That's directly to the camera. Um, but I guess she quit the business. I mean, she's still, you know, out there somewhere. She was in like Enchanted or something mm-hmm. in ninety eight. There's so ninety eight was her last movie. Oh, not the Disney Enchanted. I don't. Think no, didn't so. she also do what were we just talking about? The Twister. She did Twister. Oh, not Twister. <laughs> not, not the Twister. <laughs> not and Twister. I, and it is the Twister, but it's not that Twister. It's a yeah. different Twister from 1989. Yeah. yeah. She could totally make bank on the convention circuit if she, she did could. it. Like mm-hmm. there are could, lesser yeah. people that make a lot of money than yeah. her. There are people that have been like tertiary roles in less important movies yeah. that make yeah. money of, on like, the convention Near circuit. Dark, Lawnmower Man and this have a cool well, following. Yeah, Especially, she made like, an impression. Yeah, I think, uh, Lance made an impression Henri- on me. Lance yeah. Henriksen does every convention. Put her right next to him and be like, "Here's your Near Dark reunion." Yeah, you know, you and then yeah, you know, so for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know how to describe her appeal. There's like a, I don't know. There, there is like a. 
it's not like girl next door. There's like a sensual appeal to Jenny Wright that I think, you know, the, the fandom has had, but it's hard to nail down because her and her not- friend almost had like a, and this may be stretching it a bit and maybe because I've been watching a lot lately, but like a Marilyn Monroe, Jane maybe. Russell yeah, 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 combo yeah, yeah, yeah. and the blonde and the brunette. And that is because I've been, I think Jennifer, gentlemen prefer blondes. I was watching that the other day, <laughs> yeah. but that's what it, that's kind of what it feels for like. And that's kind of, uh, it was for work, ended up being for leisure. Yeah, it's a great movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had never watched a it's lot a of Marilyn movie. Monroe. She's, I like I know. her. Yeah. Yeah, She's yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Have you yeah. watched Some Like It Hot? Yes. Yeah. Oh, God, I yeah. love that movie. But yeah. I think what's, she gives... What's the Western River... Uh, is it Cowboys? Uh, there, no, no, there was something... A river or something... River of No Return, maybe? Mm, She's in know. a Western. It's a really she, late performance of hers, but you yeah. can check it out. It's Okay, good. yeah. yeah. I have an appreciation for it. But I think they have a similarity, and she gives off, like, a sexy innocence, mm-hmm. right? And I don't want that to sound, like, creepy or anything. No, no, but, no, right, it, yeah. it, but she yeah. does give that off, and, you know, it comes through in the movie. It this is starts River out. of No Return with, oh, Robert, nice. with Robert Mitchum. Okay. There you go. That yeah, you should bad. definitely watch it. It's, okay. a, it's, yeah, it's like good. And Rory Calhoun, too. There you go. There we go. Yeah. Nice. But I think we, yeah, I think we get the we get a sexiness from her. Mm-hmm. This movie starts out pretty sexy, I will say. Yeah, it's mm. like that sexy, sweet girl next yeah. to yes. kind of yeah, 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 for sure. And who's her uh, co-star in this movie? Oh, her co-star. What was his fucking name? Clayton Roner. If the name doesn't sound familiar, if you see the guy, yeah. I, you'll know who he is. I think we had this discussion last time we saw him on this show, probably, which was in the Relic. Right, uh, he was, right, he was in the relic. Right. Yeah, pretty he much the, the same character. <laughs> yeah, wow, he was basically that. the same character. I feel like he that. was a little more memorable in this. He had a bigger part. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bigger, but the biggest role that I remember him in once I saw him, I'm like, hey, he's the guy from April Fool's Day. Like, uh, uh, yeah, he's like, but um, he's just one of the guys from there. Me. You go. Like, yeah, that's the movie go. that I yeah. remember. I had an impression on me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you've seen the movie, you know why. <laughs> um, but also, very good movie. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like a low rent Harry Ham one to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, he's in you know? that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can see either one of those being cast mm-hmm. in, in these parts. Um, and I think there's only one other person in the uh, like up front. There's three people in the cast. There's more right. obviously in the cast, but the other one yeah, is who? So our very own I Madman himself is Randall William Cook. Okay, so I was not familiar with who say, this so guy here's, is. We need to talk about William Randall Cook. <laughs> okay. Wait, is it William Randall or Randall William? What? It sounds like a serial killer William. name either way. It's Randall Williams. Sorry. Randall I will Randall probably Cook. switch that. At yeah, because it should point. be like yeah. William Randall Cook. <laughs> yeah. no, that that's, guy sounds like a killer. That's a serial killer, yeah. <laughs> it does, but Rand- no, it's Randall but, but, William Cook. But Randy Cook sounds like he's our guy. Randy Cook's our guy. <laughs> yeah. okay. So Randy Cook has... He's kind of a, like a Hollywood legend as far as like animation goes. So our director really wanted some like top notch animation skills for that weird creature. The, the jackal. The jackal boy. He wanted some mm. weird some animation for it. He's like, I got to get someone good. So he wanted Randall because he was a huge fan of his work. We've known him, we know him from his work in The Thing. All the Lord of the Rings movies, the Ghostbuster movies, like he's done a shit ton oh, shit. of top notch like animation. So that's who he wanted. Mm-hmm. And he's a, did he he's do the visual terror dogs? Yeah. I'm guessing. Like, yeah, that's nice. So he's done a lot of really cool shit, and he was like, "There's no fucking way I'm gonna afford him." And then he's like, "I know for a fact that dude's always wanted to play a villain in a movie." So he's like, go. "Hey, do you want to play my monster?" I want you to do the animation, but you also get to play my monster. He's like, I'm fucking in. Do you know how old he was uh, at the time this movie was made? Because the, the the villain is like made to be like a 40-something yeah. odd year old guy. I, I don't know if he was that age or whatever. Um, did he do, also do the gate? Only I asked because, yeah. only because the gate had similar stop motion. Yeah, he did the gate. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, I guess, what's, uh, what's this movie about? So... This movie is about a uh, a young woman lives in Hollywood. She's an aspiring actress. Works in a bookstore. Big fan of like the old school, um, like noir horror kind of books, like um, pulp thrillers. Pulp thrillers. Yeah, yes, yeah. thank you. She's a big fan of the pulp, so she's reading these these gritty books, and she gets she gets these specific books from like an estate sale that come into the the bookstore, and as she starts reading them, she gets so involved. Like her imagination takes her through the books and we kind of start to see like her world and the world in the book kind of merge. And and then we realize that it's actually merging and these things are actually happening in her life. Mm -hmm. So she's reading about this, the I madman, and then she starts seeing him in her world. And he is. uh, okay. so the 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 
villain character is okay. So the the movie started off, and I it, you know it it starts off with one of those fake out openings right. where yeah. um, we see uh, a doctor mm-hmm. in, in a Los Angeles hotel in the fifties. <laughs> that is yeah. a vampire. Don't you dare tell <laughs> yeah. me that is a doctor. <laughs> that is Max Shrek. The, yeah. the design for this hotel, I was like. This I was like, whoever wrote that movie, no one saw Hotel Artemis, like saw oh, this yeah. movie and was like, I'm going to make a whole movie based around this hotel. Because that's even what it looks like in that. Yeah. I mean, I never saw that movie. I just saw the trailer. I think that's Couldn't like, stop seeing the trailer. But this is movie. like a thing that 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 it, uh, you know, the, there's a specific vibe to Los Angeles, mm-hmm. uh, especially when they do like these L.A. hotel based stories. Because, I mean, I thought of. Did you ever see uh, Toby Hooper's Toolbox Murders? Nope. Also feels like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Fright Night Part 2 yeah. also had this kind of, you know, whenever they do uh, Los Angeles um, hotel set, mm-hmm. even Lord of Illusions had stuff like that. Um, I don't know what the, the vibe is. There's still like a, you know, um, I guess it's like an architectural thing, but I can't explain what it is because, it, you know, it's not like. Even though when they did American Horror Story say, Hotel, they, they were American trying to, you know, too, like yeah. capture that as well. Um, just that feeling of like stucco walls and maybe yeah. well, just, I mean, there was, and, and the yeah, yeah. There's something about like the hotels in the Hollywood area that like they've forever been like a hangout. You know, like mm-hmm. that. Like there's always celebrities. Everything there. feels very lived happening in. there. Like even you know celebrities that lived in Hollywood would still go to the hotels and hang out. There's something very that's like a, that's a very LA thing. That does not yes. happen. No, in other exactly. Places. Right. Like right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm sorry. Like even in New York, people don't. LA do is that, like an you know? endangered species area yeah. for actors, <laughs> where they're all they're free to roam, yeah. and most yeah. people won't bother them. But if they get outside of it, poachers everywhere. Yeah. So the hotels can always say like, "This is when right. so and so they sat yeah. there, and they yeah. were discovered yeah. at this soda fountain." Yeah. 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 But even yeah. still, like even non-famous people in LA will go to hotels to use their pool like their rooftop pools and shit like that's a thing to just like we're gonna go to this hotel and hit the pool for the day Mm. like that's not something we do in the rest of the country (laughs) this is is kind of giving away one of my guilty pleasures but i I remember watching the hills and lauren conrad was like oh i'm at that pool every sunday yeah it's like you like i guarantee you have a house with a pool right (laughs) but they go to hotel pools it's so weird it's Mm -hmm. it is a foreign concept to the rest of us people are very weird Mm -hmm. Mm. right but yeah there's very much like Hotels have a life of their own in LA. Yeah, and I like that it's you know it starts in the fifties and right. you kind of get that vibe, but then it also you know transports mm-hmm. us to the present day, which is the eighties. Which yeah, again, um, there's yeah. that connection again. Yeah. How, yeah. how has there not been a horror movie made about the Chateau Marmont with how much bad shits happened there? Are you, like, has there not? I mean, so many famous people have died or have had bad things there's happen be. there. Oh, I, like, there's gotta be. Right? Gotta be right. But, uh-huh. but everyone, no, yeah. because Maybe everyone focuses allowed. so much on the Cecil Hotel that they completely overlook mm. Chateau Marmont. Like, well, we got the Cecil Hotel. Now yeah. we need to do the other one. Was, was Chateau Marmont where um, Somewhere was supposed to take place? Did anyone see that movie? Mm-hmm. Nope. No. Stephen don't Dorf. know. Don't, it was an alright movie. Don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, no. unfamiliar with Just the movie. Just me? So, yeah. Stephen Dorf Not the biggest Fanning? Stephen no. Dorf fan. Yeah. Well, Cold Creek Man are really guy who was in Leatherface, the origin of the... Okay. You're the only person who's seen that, I Colin. haven't seen it. I haven't. Well, <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> so well, am I. Um, our director is a fan of Stephen Dorf because he was in... Uh, he was in the gate, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he was little, little, yeah. little Stephen Dorr. Like oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, little Stephen Dorr. Yeah, we're bringing it all around. Yeah, it all connects. <laughs> um, so okay, so the fake out opening basically sets up that there's a. It's like a mad scientist movie mm-hmm. is what we're gonna watch, where the crazy doctor who looks like Max Shrek mm-hmm. uh, leaves at night, you know, all shrouded in black, and there's you know weird animal noises coming from his room. And the neighbors want the concierge to investigate, and we find Your animal <laughs> noises. But shit. yeah, but his room is like a, a mad scientist lair. Yeah, it's and gross. it's got that. Yeah, it is gross, and it's got that red rooms uh, sign, like right outside his window, so we get that right. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That yeah. I love that. sound. Yeah, oh yeah, I love it. with that red light going <laughs> yeah. in there. This is the, like production design in this movie, and I know it was working on Michaela. Was <laughs> <laughs> they, they go? They aim for like. Porterville. Yeah. <laughs> You're packing yeah. every single f- corner of the set with uh, just 
junk. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, it's not just one location like that. It's every location yeah. is like yeah. that. Yeah. This yeah. felt like L.A. in the '80s. I can imagine because everything was kind of just like dirty and dusty. It's it's gritty. The it's, whole thing is gritty. It's like the beach just blows into the town, and it's just kind of everywhere. Everything's got kind of like a, a sandy patina mm-hmm. to it. I, I honestly don't know if this was intentional. I didn't read anything about it, but I I kind of like that the only space that isn't doesn't have that hoarder vibe is her boyfriend's apartment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like her only safe space. That has to yeah. be intentional. Yeah. That has yeah, to be intentional. I don't I didn't read anything about well, it, but it has well, to be. And it's yeah. like clean and minimalist. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's kind of a reflection of his I'm like, like I'm a it. by the book clean cut guy yeah. and like here's my modern you know that yeah. he might just considering the job he has and everything and what he has to deal with every day he might just a, make he's it, a cop he's yeah. a cop yeah he's a cop a murder cop yeah. um and so because he has to deal with that shit all day he might just like is like it's gonna be clean <laughs> and yeah. organized and here sterile. the only place yeah. i can have control he's like, or it's gonna be I'm space. rarely there is there's so, also yeah. that yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. um you know, I, I, speaking again about the, the production design, the, the cinematography mm-hmm. and all that, like, I was mm-hmm. struck watching this movie a lot, like, you know, the just realizing, you know, that they're implying a lot of uh, long, sh- you know, shadows, mm. uh, Venetian blinds, it's the look of noir, yeah. you know, yes. but I'm like, only, what, within 10 years, we would have David Fincher do seven, which mm-hmm. to me is like, I was like looking at this movie going like, imagine... Right. Like, you know, those those movies are like almost they're polar opposites that share like a common thread of like, we're going to shoot in the dark. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and we're going to give it this grimy kind of look. But yeah. uh, Takish is not David Fincher, you know, no. but I think. How like, dare you? But still, I mean, you know, like or Brian England is no uh, Darius Kanji or, yeah. you know, whatever. But but it's like this it has a, a look of, the, of that period that's kind of leading into the 90s yes. where you'd go to like the X-Files. And, you know, when we go into a house, when we turn on a light, nobody has an overhead. You have to turn yeah, on a lamp. A lamp in the corner has got to be turned on. And then that's the only light you have. Yeah. 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 It's all dark and moody. Um, this opening scene, it turns out, is actually a scene from a novel uh, that uh, Jenny Wright's character is reading, mm-hmm. and then she... Um, what was the name of this novel? It had a pretty long oh, one. Um, something in... Uh, something, much something more sin, right? Yeah, more much, in sin, much of something more in sin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Much, <laughs> much something more of... Yeah. 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 I yeah. Remember. It had a jackal on the front. But yeah. that's it. <laughs> yeah. It's on the movie poster. I remember zooming in on the, the book oh, that yeah? the, her character is reading in the movie poster. If you zoom all the way in, you can see it. <laughs> it's that. Um, so she has a relationship with this police officer. Mm-hmm. Richie. Richie. And, okay. Mm-hmm. And um, they set up kind of like he's, um, you know, we're going to have one of these like kind of uh, night- new nightmare in the mouth of madness things or mm-hmm. whatever. We're, we're making a comment on the consumers of horror fiction because mm-hmm. he's like, why do you read that crap? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. because it's affecting her mind in a way that she's like having nightmares that are become like living nightmares or something. Mm-hmm. And yes, it may be affecting her sanity. Right? right. That's where we're going with this. Right. So yeah. he's like the I am seeing the world as a you know sane person. <laughs> right. And you're experiencing some weird, possibly supernatural or maybe madness. Was it much of madness? It's much madness more sin. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh wow, what much is it? Madness okay. more sin. There we go. Love it. <laughs> she works at a bookstore. Yes. Um this is one of those classic uh, we got books stacked from uh you know floor to ceiling. Mm-hmm. Uh, Triggering Michaela. <laughs> keep this bookstore away from me. I don't ever want to go to one like this. I worked in a if, real bookstore for way too long to tolerate a, this shit. If there's a rash of used bookstore burnings, I think we have a suspect. <laughs> <laughs> like, I will not tolerate this mess. Wait, I will I want it. I want to lay it out here for the listeners. It's not used bookstores as the problem. Right. It's a hoarder's nest where you literally have have to walk between stacks yeah. of books piled up to the ceiling in no order whatsoever. Even on the stairs, they're mm. piled up so yes. that one person can fit through. That's mm. not fucking See, normal. No, That's a safety I, hazard. I totally understand this. It's yeah. like, I, I love flea markets, mm-hmm. but I hate the, like, state, like, the, the, flea market buildings like the permanent yeah. ones because those are just like chaotic and they trigger my anxiety yep. I like the flea markets that like come up over the weekend because those are organized yep. mm-hmm. yeah you're asking yes. you're asking to have rats and all sorts yeah. of gross yes. shit when, yeah. you li- when you have a yes. business like this yeah, it freaks me out I don't like it yeah. and dust and, yeah. And, yeah. You know, can you and smell that bookstore yes. oh yeah yes. absolutely uh, yeah. like and and not only that like just from a practical standpoint if I'm looking for something specific I have to just hope I come across it and well, that's yeah. but that is part of the appeal going into the right. for some people 
Well, yeah, not for right. me. Yeah. And even yeah. for me, like I have to, I have to know ahead of time that all right, I'm going exactly. there to search for shit. Yeah, like, I can't yeah. just yeah. You're treasure walk hunting. in. Right. If I walk in yeah. and I'm like, I need to find something, but I have to go through this. No, yeah, I, my day is ruined. Those are two separate types of shopping. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, it is an adventure, and you gotta be up for that. Yeah, and like, and yeah, you gotta be in the mood to want to dig for something. for to enjoy it store like this. But then same point, like, why even fucking staff a store like this? Because the staff's not gonna be able to help you fucking find anything. Like, right? You know, they're there to bring you up if you find something you yeah. want. That's right. it. Like, the do good you have ones, though, book? actually do know where everything is, but those people have usually been there. For, like, they're right. hardcore and have been there forever, yeah. but that, it's you know. It's rare. Yeah. 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 They yeah. opened the bookstore. Mm-hmm. Right, and now it's, you know, now all their kids are running and they're like, yeah, I think it's they, back they, there. Yeah, so I know no where the idea. Stephen King is, <laughs> and that's about it. But like, yeah. from, like, a business owner perspective, don't you care about your product to a certain degree that you want it in, like, a better you want to take care of it a little bit better than just piling it up on a fucking staircase. Like that's your, that's how you're making your money. You want yeah. to put some care into it. I would think Yeah, I've seen record stores like that. Now it's the used mm-hmm. CD mm-hmm. store mm-hmm. stores and uh, mm-hmm. DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff. Yeah. Just eventually that's a travesty because if the, they should know you don't stack records. Yeah. yeah. You don't. Do yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, this is the world that, that she lives in. And then, mm-hmm. so I'm there's uh so what, so this this guy um, who exists in the novel, it's right. a character. Yes. Is it? Explain to me like how this whole novel thing, she finds the book and it, mm-hmm. it's been turned over to the bookstore through an estate sale and there's a character in this. Mm-hmm. And so who is this character? But there's also like a connection to an author and I'm like, are they the same person? And how does this work? So the character is Dr. Kessler. And then um, the author of the book is Malcolm Brand. Right. So Kessler is. So there's there's only two books by this author and it's it's like a sequel situation. Um, So it's this mad doctor who in the first book, he's like trying to like crossbreed. He's trying to like make new species and stuff. So he ends up like using his DNA and creating this like weird isn't Jackal this, boy. Isn't this the omen? Like, yeah. isn't, isn't this basically yeah. it? <laughs> so then that's the first book. And then the second, and then she wants to read the second book, which magically appears at her doorstep when she can't find it. Um, so she's reading this one. And in this one, Dr. Kessler is obsessed with an actress and he, and she doesn't like him because she thinks he's ugly. So his whole mission is to change his appearance to please her. Mm-hmm. And so the crimes that he's committing is basically like taking other people's body, killing people and taking their body parts to, you know, give him a new nose. And at first he cuts off his own face, his yes. own features. And then the, the murders start happening. He starts collecting new features. Yep. And then this starts, this is what starts to bleed over right. into the real world where it seems like this Dr. Kessler character or Malcolm Brand, Malcolm Brand. or they're yeah. the same person person because he says i think at some point we find out these books are quote-unquote non-fiction right yeah and she goes to visit the uh, publisher of his two books and he lays down a story about the author and how um on his the things he did to himself ended up in his i madman book mm-hmm. the mutilation and whatnot so it did happen and ended up in the book so at that point we learn that malcolm brand has uh, was nuts. Like he went off the deep end. Right. Yeah, because he dies in real life, right? This is what I was led to believe by the what the publisher tells us is yeah. that he was crazy. He thought that he was being hunted by the characters from mm-hmm. his original novel. So we kind of get that kind of mm-hmm. magical thing happening that you know the character he said he was you know he said they didn't to- they didn't want to do what he what he wanted them to do. Like they were talking back to him. He's like no. We're not going to listen to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the publisher's office is an even <laughs> grosser hoarder's nest than anything we've seen before. This is what the, thir- the third hoarding location we've seen at this point. Yeah. Like These are, these are uh, in- individuals who are so busy and consumed with their jobs that they ignore everything else. I, I only <laughs> sell smut is what he tells yeah. her, right? Yeah. yeah. She's not too busy. She just spends all her time reading. Yeah, she's she just needs, lazy she and She needs gross. to clean her apartment. Yeah. <laughs> and does she even have a TV? Yes, she did. She had a TV because yeah. we saw it yep. at oh, static, static, yeah. static yeah. at one point. Yeah. Um, so the, okay, so so he, so she is also, I don't know if we mentioned this, she's also an actress because she right. she's, lives in Los Angeles. Right. And this is what you do. Yeah. yeah. So she goes to auditions uh, with a friend of hers. Yeah, she has and, an acting class. And she hates the, uh, the <laughs> red-headed actress. She's like, she's talented, she's beautiful, I hate her. Which, like, <laughs> I kind of wish this movie would have given us a reason to hate her. 
Like just the show, wig alone. Just show. I, mean, I think the that's wig our is, reason to hate her. The wig is bad, but like just show us her being a bitch to her or something in like one scene to give us a reason to really be like, yeah. Well, you know, I like, don't think we're. we're I, don't, me- yeah. I don't think we're meant to dislike her because even she talks about her and she's like, what? She's talented. She's beautiful. Like she doesn't hate her, but it's, she does hate her. Right. It's yeah, like legitimately does. not liking someone because like, God damn it, why are you so? good? Yeah, she's mm-hmm. jealous of her, and and we get that because like she clearly she's like she's great. Like why you know because he makes a comment about not liking her and she's like, why don't you like her? She's great. Yeah. You yeah. know. So I don't think we're meant to not like her. I, I was because they were when we're introduced to this character, she's doing a scene. Um, at the beginning, uh, in front of uh, the class and all that, and when she's see when we see the wig, I'm like, was this for this scene yeah. right here? Right. Because yeah. it, it's so obviously. I'm a glad wig. there was a reason for it. I'm yeah. glad yes. we. F- I'm glad we find out later why yeah. the wig existed in yeah. this movie. Because yeah. yeah, I was like, what's wrong with her? This actress's hair, like yeah. you know. But there was there was another thing that was set up in that scene that I didn't realize until later when I was trying to process, like, okay, what what our, what's our killer after? But the fact that he's going after body parts, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, her hair is red and stands out. Mm-hmm. Um, a Jenny Wright's uh, actor friend says that, oh, you're he's- never going to get to do my Sereno and puts on like a big fake nose, yeah. draw, therefore drawing attention to the fact that like later on when it's yeah. like, well, he's going to get the hair from somebody. Yep. He's going to get the ear from somebody. He's going to get the nose and the lips. And I was just kind of like going... Okay, the way that this movie's going to angle down is eventually her boyfriend is going to become a target for some feature, right? Right. Right. He is going to kill the boyfriend in order to go like, now I've got his whatever. Right, now you'll love me. And now you'll love me, right? Uh, But that doesn't end up happening. I don't know if you guys, I I mean. I mean, we were kind of all over the place of where we thought this was going to go because I think the, uh, I think the opportunity to end up the places we thought it was going to go um, is alive until way late into the movie. Like, I think this could have gone a lot of places up to a certain point in the movie, and that certain point, I think, is, like, way later. Okay. So we're, like, we're continually guessing up until, like, the last, like, 20 minutes of this movie or mm-hmm. something. Like, it has yeah. the opportunity to go many places. Which, I, th- I thought for sure it was going to be Virginia was doing it all. I mean, I thought I so, thought too. I thought for sure. And I was <laughs> putting it through my head, like, all right, this is... 89 are, what are we doing right now are we doing the fake out right, right. are we doing she's the killer because we haven't done that before like yeah. i'm trying to get back into it and like you're like was this the first time they did it well no, I, uh, yeah but you're trying to like yeah. are they doing this often like what what is the thing so it's hard sometimes it's harder to do it for the older movies than it is for the yeah newer ones. you're saying like mm-hmm. the psychological thing that now we just expect that it's like yes. oh it turns out it was our hero the whole time yeah. right who was crazy and was actually yeah, yeah which happens people. a lot so yeah. when this you, comes up you're, well, you're just candy man was like no the next year? No, was that 90? 90, 90, was it 92? 92, 92, I think. Okay, 92, all right. Three, yeah. Like, yeah. So we're getting into the psychological stage of the horror movie. So, yeah, it's not like out of left field that it, it would be like, okay. But, okay, so I guess uh, you came to that because you, you've seen a bunch of movies since. Yes. Did the mo- Do you think the movie was playing into that, that like uh, by throwing evidence her way or pushing the investigation towards her? Because eventually the police become involved. She says, I witnessed the killer kill. uh, She witnesses him kill a a piano playing guy Mm -hmm. across the street. Um, And she calls the police and like, you know, the rear window situation. There's a murder going to happen. That's where the ear comes from. She keeps being a witness to the murder. Yes. Like she keeps ending up where the murders happen. And so. Which like we've seen this. This is what made me think like it's her because I've seen this before. And even in like recent movies, I don't want to say what they are for spoiler's sake, but like I've seen it in pretty recent movies. Like, yeah, but it's funny because in this, like at no point does it seem like anyone else in the scenario thinks it's her. Right. Yes. That's right. what I was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause nobody's the kind. They all think she's loony, yeah. but they don't think it's her or at least none of them are expressing. Yeah. Right. She, it could be her. All this yeah. evidence is going to, it like never the, does like that. The, chief, the police chief or lieutenant or whoever he is, he's just like rolling his eyes. Like he does not suspect her at all. And I'm yeah. like, really? Yeah. I thought that was kind of weird. She's some murders. You're not. Yeah. Ex- Cause we're all sitting here shouting. She it, called like, in one before it happened. Yeah. 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 She yeah. calls it's, in one before it happens. And the second one, which well, that's where I was sure that it was going to, you know, a line of questioning was going to be open. Whereas the one under the bridge where yeah. her friend's nose yeah. is taken and you know, the police show up. And they're going, oh, Sarge, we got a witness. Who is it? Right. It's uh, the, it's Virginia. What's her name? And he's yeah. like, 
Uh, man. And I'm she's like, she's a nuisance, thinking, not a suspect. Right. Yeah. yeah, like, oh, of course it's her because she's right. this crazy Horrible cops. All of them are horrible cops. <laughs> like, I, can, I can see the boyfriend being in denial, but the rest of them, like, you're doing a terrible uh, right, thing. Right. Like, <laughs> it's kind of surprising they didn't go that route because that would cause tension between the boyfriend and yes. his superior. Yeah. 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 You know? yeah. right. like, but we sit here and say all this stuff. Would we be disappointed in this movie had it done all the things that we suspected it to do? No, because it, this became before all those things. You know what I'm but, saying? Well, well, but it would have been one of the first. Now, it came before, but we're still seeing something if it had gone that way. We'd still be seeing something we see a lot. But that's yeah. not this movie's fault, is what I'm Very saying. Very true. Very but, true. Uh, but I also think, like, it's that's a different movie. Mm-hmm. You know, the way this movie played out, that makes sense for what kind of movie this is, if that makes sense. The way Which it played is out, angling toward the, you know, it's like, yeah, he, he well, he, the 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 boyfriend cop doesn't necessarily believe her, uh, but she, there's no conflict as to whether or not this is actually a real supernatural thing mm-hmm. or it's her. Like, mm-hmm. I guess that's the thing that the movie doesn't do. It never really mm-hmm. gives you like a conflict of is it her or not. We're filling that in because. Yeah. You know, because of our experience that yeah, we've had, that's there, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you go like, well, they're trying to, the supernatural thing is trying to make it look like it's you. So you'll eventually want to join him in the supernatural, you know, afterlife. Because Candy it's, man. <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Because it's, uh, it, it's angling itself like a, you know, unrequited mm-hmm. love story. He loves the character of, uh, Annette or whatever. Uh, Anna, I think it's but Anna. But she keeps seeing herself in that role in her mind whenever we get like, I think like two or three dramatizations of scenes from that novel mm-hmm. where we actually go back to the 50s and see him stalking the streets and mm-hmm. choosing his uh, victims in that. While wearing what, Colin? Well, I mean, you got to have the long, big black uh, trench oh, coat no. and, and the what beret. Else? There we there go. Is. There it is. We are full on beret. <laughs> He's got a little movie. face mask up covering his Until nose. Until he gets his hair, his long, his... luxurious locks, he is beret ridden. I will like, say ridden. We were talking about like the cinematic history of the beret while we were watching this movie. <laughs> we were. We were discussing it. Because it has been... It has been parodied so much that it is just a joke now. Yes, berets are no longer serious whatsoever. Does it no. come from like the Che Guevara posters? Or no, I think no, no, no. it comes it's from like mimes. sixteen can well of that. <laughs> but I think it comes yeah. from um, like I'm not saying sixteen candles specifically, but um, in older movies when like uh, people were trying to be artistic, they either have like the yep. scarf around their yep. neck yep. or the beret. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, a, posers would do it. Yes, uh, the a, a, French. A, a, yeah. bray, a bray oh. shorthand for mime, French, or artist. Or okay. asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Or artist. Yeah. 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 The suffering artist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then they nailed it yeah. in this movie. They, well, they yeah. did, because that was my other thing. He's an artist too, right? But like, you cannot seriously wear a beret ever. Right. It's but, just not possible anymore. Yeah, like, it's, yeah I can't, that is a I thing can't of the take past. it seriously. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, I think ever, whenever it shows up in a more, if it ever shows up in a more recent movie, it's always made yeah. fun of, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's always pointed out. It's yes. never just like, you can't just casually wear a beret. You're making a statement when you wear <laughs> <No>. a beret. <laughs> That's a specific <laughs> statement, yeah. yes. Did you guys ever see the um, Robert Englund Phantom of the Opera? I have not seen it. No. no. Okay, I'm only so. bringing it up for those of you who have. It's like, uh, so I, if you haven't seen this movie, it's like there's some similarities in both the uh, the girl and that, his, the focus of his attention works in a, a music store. So there's all this published music. It looks like the bookstore. That makes sense. Yes. Uh, he also has a disfigurement and puts prosthetic pieces on his face and he's, you know, going after this girl. There's a lot of shots in streets with, uh, you know, guy in a big black cloak and a lot of smoke. And it came out the same year as this. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> like, I think it's just uh, the, huh. the, the, yeah, that artistic thing. In yeah, the, yeah. In the an artist that that's, point, yeah. you know, targeting a. And Darkman a wasn't far behind this, right? It was Darkman 1990? I think it was. I think it feels like. Yeah, yeah. 1991. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I rewatched yeah. that this past Halloween, and what what a great movie. Dark <laughs> Dark <laughs> Dark we did an episode on it. That's right. You we should go back and listen to our Darkman episode. Always shilling. Yeah. Yeah. Get it, Colin. We got two on this already. The shirt out today to show the people like, hey, you see this shirt? Um, so uh, yeah, so basically that becomes the thing. She's trying to convince uh people. I'm I was actually surprised at how clearly she understood what was happening. There was really no question to her. Like, this is what's happening. I started reading the book, and somehow 
it has bled over into, you know, reality. And this guy is now going after, like it says in the book, what he's going to do. Yep. He's going to, he's going to go after a person and try to get their, uh, hair. He's going to go after a person, try to get their nose. He's going to go after a person, try to get their lips. And it describes how this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, he, that's the guy you're looking for. And mm -hmm. she's trying desperately to convince her boyfriend and the police that like, this is your guy. And they're right. of course are treating it like rational people do like, okay, that's crazy. Right. Cause she <laughs> says a, the, a, a character, he got out of the book. Like that's her yeah. explanation <laughs> yeah, for yeah. it. And you can't like do that. Like the character came out of the book and now he's killing people. Like, mm, yeah. I don't know. So the only thing I guess that I was kind of like, you know, when because uh, uh, he does uh, kill her. Well, the actress, that's where he gets the hair mm -hmm. from, the redheaded actress. Yep. He gets the nose from the Cyrano de Bergerac uh, actor. Yep. And then so it's like, clearly, it's people within your social circle. And then yeah. there comes this moment where it's like, well, next he's going to go after, um, you Stone know, cats. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to go after somebody for their lips, mm -hmm. and he's described her hot lips on the pillow, and, you know, she works mm -hmm. at a place surrounded by books. A love-thirsty woman, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and there's cats, mm -hmm. and she makes the connection that this is the library, which we haven't seen in the movie before, but right. there's stone... Uh, I think you know, they call Stone Cold Cats. A, I think yeah. it's yeah. what it says it's in the book. The, yeah. Well, I was going to say it's the New York Library. That's not true. Uh, or because we're in Los Angeles. Oh, we are in Los. That's what. I, that's what I was fucking. That's where my confusion was. Because I'm like, there's lions in front of libraries. Where are we? Because I, I yeah. was thinking New York there for a second, but I forgot. It's a ghost here in LA. library. Yes. Yeah. Well, in our sh the Chicago Art Museum, I was like, there's lions in front of it too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Lions in front of shit yeah. that she's thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> so this begins like a segment of the movie where, so that's why I'm curious where you guys were because I was sitting there going like. Really, you're making that connection where it's been your social circle, mm -hmm. and the only other person you know is your friend who works in the same store as you do, which is a bookstore. And a cat just jumped in mm -hmm. in the last scene and gave us a yep. little ooh, cat scare. Yeah, <laughs> like clearly, yeah. <laughs> which we didn't get in the part where I said we were going to get a cat scare. God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> this movie surprises me to no end. <laughs> I zig, they zag. Yeah. God damn it. But that could be a good thing. You can't, you can't you zigzag toes. through that fucking bookstore, though, man. It's so no. crowded full no, of can't. shit. Good luck. No, you can't. No. Well, <laughs> but you're right. She does. She messes it up. But did you, when you were watching it, were you like, well, clearly that means it's her friend? Or were yeah. you kind of going with the, uh, like, okay, well, where are we going now? Because the this cat. leads us into like a 15-minute diversion in the mm -hmm. movie. The cat mentioned, I was like, okay, so it's the cat at the bookstore. Because why else would they make a point of being like, look, we have a cat now. Yeah. You know? And like There's that. And when she said, uh, yeah, I'll be there now half hour i'm leaving and the friend says okay i'll unpack it tonight i knew right then i'm like she's dead because yeah. if she's gonna leave and then her friend's gonna be at the bookstore all by herself i'm like yeah that's the one you're obviously she, they're going for mm -hmm. like this whole library with the um uh with the cats and all that stuff i'm like this is not gonna happen mm -hmm. like it just can't well i guess the question then is so what was your how did you feel during those sequences i mean was it like well clearly we're off like somewhere uh, like yeah this is just spinning our wheels because we got to get back to the, the you mm -hmm. know i mean it's like 15 minutes yeah of yeah. the movie where it's like i guess that's one of those things where it feels like the audience is ahead of the movie right but yeah. were that's they, the problem but were I'm they saying. in 1989 is what i'm trying to think like would they be i'm like i'm not trying to discount how smart audiences were in 1989 but like would they be clued in? Have they seen stuff before that would clue them into this or was this a complete but the surprise? Movie, the movie is doing it for you. Yeah. Like, cat, always right. surrounded by books. And then she reads a, a description that's like, basically, that's what, you know, because I yeah. think the, um, didn't the um, friend who was in the bookstore, co-worker, I guess yeah. what I'm trying to say, co-worker, yeah. not, not store owner, Mona, thank Mona. you, there we go. Didn't she also say something about um, there was, yeah, because there was like she was like looking for, you know, like a boyfriend or something. Yeah. Yeah. The, the first scene that we see her, she's doing her lipstick. Like, oh, yeah. And she, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she says, like, uh, if she's talking about her, um, what's her name? Not Anna. Um, Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. Yes. Virginia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Virginia. Yes. And Virginia's like, if a man like that proposed to me, I'd saddle up and. Yeah. Right. right. There yeah. it is. Okay. There it is. Yeah. yeah. I knew she I was like, that. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, I yeah. feel like the, I feel like they could have done something different with the misdirection. Like, I feel like 
she could have suspected that he's going to attack her in her apartment and she's actually in the bookstore or vice versa. She thinks she's going to get attacked in the bookstore. So they stake that out and then it's actually in her apartment. They could have done something like that. Right. right? right. Like that would have made more sense. Which I feel like in a lot of like police procedural movies that happens a lot. You know, yeah. I feel like that's something we're comfortable with as an audience. Mm-hmm. is like yeah. that kind of like, oh, we set up at the long, wrong location. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah. Silence yeah. of the Lambs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, because that's what I'm and maybe maybe that movie you know, because that came later and I was like, okay, is this doing that thing where there's a, there is a scene where uh, Virginia is trying to uh, pose basically as bait yes, mm-hmm. in the library. And there's a scene where she's in a room, she's all wired up, uh, you know, to the cops mm-hmm. and she's like, I'm in a room and I hear footsteps and there's a guy coming and we see someone walking into the room and I'm like, are they doing cross cutting? We're like, this is actually right, the yeah. guy in. But he's the, there. Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. the end of Silence of the yes, Lambs. They right? keep showing it. You think it's in her library, but it's at the bookstore. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, and, <gasps> yes, because they when, did that. I'm sorry, uh, they did that before when they're shifting between the 50s and the 80s with Virginia in her apartment. I'm just going to call her from now yeah. on. Yeah, th- and like I'm totally fine with this misdirection, this, with this mm-hmm. like r- wrong location. Just the library doesn't make sense, right? It, it, like I said, it, it should have been bookstore in her apartment swapped. Yeah. That's it what it should have been. That's what it made sense. It doesn't make any sense for the character to assume that that's what right. that means. Yeah, like I, why don't they just have her like pretending to work the bookstore mm-hmm. and you know try to lure him there and then oh nope he actually went to her her friend's apartment. Right. That makes more mm-hmm. sense. Right. Yeah. I think they're definitely setting it up for because everyone still thinks she's nuts. Yeah, but it made. But my problem with it is, is like I was with that character up until that point. But then it was like, you are missing something completely obvious. It makes the yeah. character dumb. Exactly. You know? and she's, she's been dumb. getting it yeah. this yeah, yeah. whole time. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And this is the yeah. point where I was okay, like, you're right, sharp right. on everything and absolutely yeah. correct. You're this right. time it's like, absolutely. you're dumb. And they do kind of like, I see this and you don't. They yeah. do kind of muddle with her when she ends up being wrong. Um, because she says, I don't know, there could be, there's tons of places with right. books and cats and shit like that. You're right. They probably should have just kept her right on it. Well, and mm-hmm. it's also like the extra layer of like kind of stupid to it is like the cops aren't taking her seriously at all until this point, And then they take her seriously yeah. on her wrong lead. I did not get that, that. Why all of a sudden are they trusting her enough to set up this whole like sting? Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot the of only thing, Yeah. The only yeah. thing we get is the boyfriend like went to town or went went to town went to bat for went yeah. to town on. <laughs> no, no that, not was, that was earlier in the yeah movie. that was earlier that was the sexiness no he went to bat for to get people to check this out even a few uh what do you call them a few uniforms in there yeah, um, yeah. what did the other cop call him ah, they said something uniform. derogatory yeah. yeah what do you call him something derogatory oh because they have the he, said, he said rent a cop the rent a cop yeah. Yeah. yeah the rent a cops yeah, yeah. have been informed <laughs> yes <laughs> Yes, that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, because that's a, they organized this whole sting based on. I mean, her it, shitty like yeah. assumption. Basically, yeah. Is yeah. it desperate? That's what I'm like. Is it desperation on the part of the I, cops? I were like, so, well, be- sh- this woman has a predicted one murder, and she's been, been at, at the scene like, of yeah. like at least one more. Yeah. Was it two more. Yeah. At least one more. So I guess what do we have to lose? So they like, you know, the whole force shows up. We're going to stake out this library. I think you know? so. I think it comes across when the boyfriend's talking to her about how her his boss is making him chase down other leads because they have nothing at this point. Yeah. So I guess it does come down to mm-hmm. like desperation that they would finally listen to her. Mm. Mm hmm. He had to do a lot of convincing on that. But then it's funny that the the librarian actually like uh, <laughs> so they have this librarian, you know, who's because it's like it's going to be the librarian. And she is getting all wired up, uh, you know, to, with the microphones to go out there. And uh, she passes out, you right. know, the, the, too she's, much. yeah, she faints. So, of <laughs> course, that means that Virginia is going to have to Virginia do it. Virginia has to step in. Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. She finally gets, and at this point, she finally gets the look that she's had in the 50s flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Like, they finally cross that over into this reality, I'll say, mm-hmm. which is, I thought was kind of a nice touch. There was, there was a nice uh, transition to the 50s thing that I kind of liked. There was one in her bedroom where she, like, got out of bed and, like, stepped into the shadow. Then when she steps back out of the shadow. That was nice. Close up. She's yeah. uh, in, yes. in a different wardrobe, different hairstyle yes. and all. I'm like, oh, okay. I yeah, mean, there's some good yeah. transitions. Yeah, there's yeah. this blurring of uh, dimensions. Yeah. I think the sh- yeah. and I think the shadows help with that. Yeah. In this cuz you know you can just go into one come out the other. Like. Yeah. And it's never really explained. I don't think like how this guy is able to transcend time or dimension or whatever, right? 
Um, and be, be very in, uh, very knowledgeable about where people are going to be and what she's doing. Yeah. And following her and knowing, like, making her play the game he's playing. Yeah, like, we don't know the logic behind it. all it. falls in yeah. pretty good. Like, how does he, like, he got pretty lucky or he's a little supernatural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there is a Jacqueline in this movie. So. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's, I guess that's what I'm angling towards. It's like, because at some point you have to go, well, like, okay, how do you defeat your supernatural menace, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what is his Achilles heel? Which I was like, okay, it's going to be one of these, you burn the book. <laughs> right. Then, the we, then we get into the uh, genre of, of magic book movies. Right. Yeah. We're like, how do we do this? <laughs> but that's, that's not so what happens. No, no. Yeah. I mean, we get it's still magic book as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> well, it, yeah, I guess toward the end it but does. I, kinda... But that's what I, I wasn't expecting it. But it ended up being like, all right, I guess it's I, she's somebody's magic here. Like yeah. some magic is yeah. going on, some supernatural element to this. Yeah. But why? How? Heretofore? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Just I mean, I guess if you, you you're that evil. No, I don't know what they're going for here. It's He's just the guy evil. somehow transferred into the spirit realm and yeah, is able to know. come Some, out through this. Somehow one book. Malcolm Brand made this universe that's like supernatural. I don't know. They never like that's the thing about it. We we know that he was he was doing the things that he was writing about, and they never say if like it happened because he wrote it or it he wrote it because it happened right i was like, yeah. i was waiting for this whole thing to be done and then for like the book to be published like this was all happening and the book hadn't been published yet <laughs> yeah. and then it would come out i mad man and that was it would be the story that we just watched or something yeah. right, like that yeah because it could have gone that way it yeah. yeah 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 but somehow his his inner workings has created this like supernatural world so how do you create the i madman use the other creature he created well yeah. i mean <laughs> well uh, first we have to i think we have to revisit uh michaela's hoarding corner one yes, more time for the run up the stairs <laughs> because national geographic store. is a hazard it's, it a, is. it's, a, it's a, okay but they're in every bookstore but uh, well but okay but this is true though have you ever just owned one national geographic yes. no no, Colin, come <laughs> they on. They multiply. If you have a, like... If, oh, I see what you're saying. Like, yeah, you yeah, never yeah. just own one no, no, issue. No, no. Yeah, like, you have, yeah, like, you have a several. stack. You yeah. always have... Like, I had them growing up, and it was always, like... I don't know if it's because we had a subscription or what. Or they're always just, around. But they're always... They always come in bulk. Yeah. It's like, you can never just get a issue, you know? Right. It's like, like ordering Encyclopedia Britannica's at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, they yeah. never the just, stack. like... They, it's like it's like illegal for them to be separated or something. Mm. They're always together, but but she's running up the stairs that has it's, like the stacks of books on the side and is like narrow enough for one person. And this she knocks a couple stacks of books down and it's literally like an then, avalanche of books. Right, and well, and then we see the avalanche of yellow, and yeah. we all knew what it was. <laughs> yeah. so, we all knew. It's so funny. I have to bring this up real quick. I can't believe that this is a topic of conversation twice in a week for me. <laughs> but my friend sent me this picture the other day. And she says, should I buy this? It's every National Geographic from 1984 to 1990 for That's six, what I'm saying! For $60. <laughs> See, they oh only God. come as a set. They only come that way! Can you imagine and I was the, like, why is National Geographic playing such a huge part in my life right yeah. now? Yeah. Oh. And like, but like... I kind of laughed when we saw that many of them coming down because those yes. fuckers are slippery. They like are. They're that's very glossy. Very, like glossy yeah. paper, yeah. yeah. And so like it makes sense that she would not be able to get any traction on that right? shit. Like wonderful. Yeah, I buy it, man. <laughs> well, and like not only that, like I was kind of surprised there wasn't like a paper cut scene happening at that point. I was like, oh my god, the paper cuts of you if you're like trying to climb up this avalanche. I mean, wouldn't it have books? been great if we stopped for like ten minutes at that point in the movie and just like. <laughs> oh! Yeah. Well, I like that he's following her, and he actually has to deal with the National Geographic spillage also. <laughs> yeah. You know, trying the supernatural killer. Yeah. Um, but she does figure out that the way to beat him is to, because, you know, her right. boyfriend comes in. To and he finally, yeah, yeah, he finally gets the note that she left for him, because it was left on his desk. Yeah. And so he shows up to save the day and mm -hmm. shoots our, our bad guy. You know, like, okay, off. shot him. But bullets Dead. won't stop the supernatural, Sean. Guess not. They won't. Mm. Well, what will mm. stop the supernatural, Holly? Other supernatural. Jackal boys. Jackal boy. <laughs> Obviously. Did we say that this jackal boy is like his son? Right, it's Dr. Kessler's son. Like, yeah, because he used yeah. his semen to... Yes. Yeah, didn't they explain yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, he yeah, took yeah. his semen and the um, eggs of a jackal right. and then supplanted that into a surrogate. And this yes. is explained while they're in the middle of foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> right, they are. 
Uh, is that the one where she was like uh, asking him, like, would you cut off your ear for me? Yeah. No, 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 no. This oh, was, okay, was this the, was like the legitimate she's, sex scene. That's why I'm saying, like, oh, okay. she's literally she's, like unbuttoning his his pants and she's, oh, she's right. yeah. Yeah. yeah this is yeah this is 10 minutes into the movie yeah. she's like he takes his semen unzip i'm like what yeah it's not the dirty talk and, that i know of they're, yeah their dirty talk is so fucking weird like and it, so weird. well it adds another level to it because this is 10 minutes into the movie yeah. and not knowing anything about it i didn't know what was going to happen right cuz yeah. this uh right off the bat i this felt like an anthology story that was about to end. Yeah. Like yeah. she was talking about the creepy stuff and then she was going to transform and rip them apart. Yeah. Right. Like that's the feeling I got. I, for sure. I thought it was sure. going to be an anthology too. I was like, here we go. That's like, what I thought. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is going to happen to him. We're going to be done and go on to the next one. <laughs> for, <laughs> for, for sure. sure. Yeah. And I would have been okay with that. Actually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was like, okay. like, I'm in for this. Yeah. But no, this is just their foreplay is talking about like horrific. tell me about your stupid books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry, it just I, keeps I, going. It I didn't hear a word going. they said, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It was a sexy scene to me, so it well, was. Yeah. And Jack and it went on for a while it was, too. It, was it like, did. Wow, this is a very tender moment between mm, these people yeah, that we're witnessing yeah. a lot of. Um but Jack so, so yeah, she she opens the 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 first book and she opens to the page talking about how the jackal boy is not dead. So comes her, back. she has to read it like and yes. reading it makes it happen right now. Yes, which mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure, Sean, this was an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? It's got, I mean, I it's been like an episode of a few things, I think, I just think reading so. it and things yeah. happen. I've seen that yeah. story before. But then the uh, uh, jackal boy shows back up. I was so happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I was. It was mouth open no, happiness yeah, for the rest about of the jackal movie. Boy. This is the stop. This is the stop animation. Yes. that yeah. our leading man created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. And then it gets yeah. like bisected. It does. Yeah. It gets ghosted. It gets ghosted. Like a, a, a up pane. and down window yeah. pane breaks, mm-hmm. and it comes out and slices him in half. Yeah. Like and Carl. there's chocolate syrup everywhere. Just like Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Carl. <laughs> except <laughs> Carl's dead. Jackal yeah. Boy's not. Jackal Boy's not no. dead. Jackal Boy comes He's back. He's cut in half. He's yep. not dead. He's <laughs> got two good arms that That's he can right. crawl Again, around very on. Very flexible, good arms. Again, I was very happy to see him come back. Because I was hoping that was not the end of him. you can't kill Supernatural the, the right way. Nope. No. no. And so, how do you do it? <laughs> Jackal Boy tackles uh, uh, the bad guy. They go yeah. out the window. And they explode and the, into confetti. And the pages <laughs> literally... Blow fly out the, out the window. Yeah, the, yeah. I think it was. It looks like confetti, but I think the first shot is you see like yes. a bunch of like book pages. So yeah. somehow, yeah. the two of them colliding have turned uh, yes. back into the pages of the book, and yeah. that, and they all scatter into the breeze. Yeah, yep. and it's like that has dissipated our our menace. Yep. Yeah, and the boyfriend <laughs> doesn't know what's happened, and she's very happy that it's over, mm-hmm. and they have a lot of explaining to do, considering they have no evidence of how this resolved. Right, yeah. <laughs> just now a she, book avalanche. That's uh, yeah, all that's I left. They, do you have to just ignore it? Like you have to, pre- you, but you have to pretend like the killer went away, right? And yeah. just yeah. ignore it. Yeah. He just uh, stopped. His, that's it. His run. Just, his, he was going to do these yeah. four. He did all four of them. And there, yeah. yeah, you have to never mention this again. Ever. Yeah. You can't talk. This about is for it. your therapist. And that's it. You just go to Ohio to meet his folks. And that's yeah, it. that's it. <laughs> that's it. How's city life? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. How's work, honey? Well, I don't want to talk about. It. <laughs> I read, read a new book. I don't want to talk about. It. I've been yeah. reading a lot lately. Yeah. That's why I'm like I'm hung up on the idea is like is it like so how does like if your if your significant other is a horror fan person and is really into horror fiction mm-hmm. and it's all consuming and they're this addicted is to it. Non-fiction, Colin. We learned that. Well, but she's non-fiction. also addicted. She like you know wakes up in the middle of the night while they're sleeping together and like has to read the book. She's got the book with her all the time. The book like sneaks its way out of her purse. It like, does. It, it moves <laughs> it, like yeah. in between cuts. It's moved out of her purse. I was waiting for another one where it's just like open. Where yeah. You see one page, one yeah, page flip down. The book is like a living thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. but Obviously. this is yeah. basically an unhealthy obsession that is cured by. I do, I, I, By finishing the story, I guess. Yeah, I, th- I honestly think that the book has bewitched her. I don't think that she always has this unhealthy obsession. I think she casually reads these books, gets a little freaked out, and then moves on with her life. Mm-hmm. Right. This I don't, is, this I don't is, she just happened to read a live yeah. book. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So that I, I think live she's book bewitched by the book. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. she's not reading other books and being like, I can't think of anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this book got chips. her. Yeah. She says, you <laughs> yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I've done that before. Where, like, I can't sleep at night, and I'm like, well, I guess I'll just read a little bit like of this book that I'm reading. Like, people do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's not unusual. Yeah. Well, it ends happily uh, for the couple, and apparently they are going to go off to the you know his to see his parents. Sure. <laughs> in, Ohio. in Ohio. Yeah. For Christmas. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. There uh, it is. Well, I guess, uh, okay, so now uh, you really want to know what our thoughts are on I'm Mad Man and whether we would recommend that you watch this movie. But before we uh, tell you that, we're going to have to summon our mailman to read some of your mail. And uh, his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Randall William Cook was 38 when he made this movie. Oh, oh so that is he was like born a lot in 51. Of prosthesis, yes, going on there. Nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he's a normal looking dude, actually, surprisingly. <laughs> You know what else he lo- he looked like? Um, did you ever see? Because he's got like contacts and a bunch of scars and mm-hmm. all. That. Um, Roger Corman's last movie was a movie called Frankenstein Unbound, and the monster in that, I swear to God, looks pretty much just yeah. like this guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Did you same. See my, did you see my hoodie? You guys? Oh, look at, oh shit! Oh, yeah, it's a Frankenstein, Frankenstein hoodie. Oh, nice. Yeah, and that's the first thing I asked Holly when we were watching. Oh, this. Okay. nice. It's alive. It's alive. <laughs> yeah. Thank Very you. nice. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, we should remind the folks at home how they can uh, participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Email. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. <laughs> you got really excited about that email. <laughs> email. <laughs> Don't forget. Email. Email. And Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, uh, I Madman Nelson Nascimento writes in. And says, uh, Tibor Takish strikes again. Mm-hmm. I've always loved this movie. An interesting meta mix blurring reality and fiction. Some nods to Rear Window and In the Mouth of Madness before In the Mouth of Madness. Yep. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yep. Uh, Robin, Robin Linneman Silverberg says, this is one that slipped by me, but by the looks of the trailer, I'm going to have to search it out. Yep. Yeah, that was my thought, too. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Michael Whitaker says, well, I'm two seconds in, and Willem Dafoe from Shadow of the Vampire showed up, so there's that. <laughs> He's not wrong. Oh, he does like look he like. Does. He looks. He really does. Okay, there yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he says, I'm also convinced there's more dreamlike fake outs, and her nighty is going to get progressively smaller. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering. It did happen. <laughs> it like, did, like yeah. her nighty, underwear. Where are we going? Yeah, right. it's like what year? From the fifties to the eighties. Yeah, uh, Simon Carter. Yeah, what what decade were people walking around just naked? Like, <laughs> are we going to go to that uh, decade anytime 1362. soon? Thirteen hundred and sixty-two. Uh, okay. Simon Carter says, "All I remember of this movie is the weird Madman Mars song. It seemed like it was from a totally different time period. It should have been played on a lute or some such shit. <laughs> or I'm confusing two movies in my head. A lute, like Sting." It turns out you are, Simon. You're thinking of Madman, the movie about Madman Mars. The, it's a, like a Friday the uh, 13th with uh, Galen Ross in it. Okay. Um, she was in uh, Dawn of the Dead. Uh, about uh, two weeks ago, we watched Death Wish 3. Uh, Grindhouse 84 says, the movie is the fucking Wild West. Anything goes. <laughs> yeah. It's canon at its best. It also features a young Alex Winter. Oh, yeah. That movie is just like unhinged. I gotta like, watch this movie. You do, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Just go straight to that one. Okay. Um, get some ice cream because you're gonna want it. Apparently, well, yeah. on here. that episode, I was saying you got to watch like Invasion USA, Death Wish Three, and Cobra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've got the first two down. So yeah, we're good. there you go. Uh, Art by Queasy says, uh, uh, "Okay, so we were saying that Alex Winter was in this movie. He also uh, was in, you know, obviously Bill and Ted and The Lost mm-hmm. Boys, but he was a director of a movie called Freaked. And Art by Queasy says, Freaked is rad." Mm. We've gotten recommended to watch it several yeah, times. Keeps right now, coming so up, yeah, it's yeah. like a it's carnival. My, it's been on my list. Movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have not seen it all the way. I have, through. I have not either. I have seen, I've seen that image for my entire life of mm-hmm. Alex Winter half. Yeah, Colin, don't half watch him. it. I know how you are. Okay. Yeah, right. I was gonna say, don't watch it within the next two weeks because <laughs> then you're just gonna be like, fuck, I watched it already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. It's coming to the Saturday Night Freak Show at some point. Um, I mean, it has you know part just of just stop title watching movies, Colin. Who yeah, knows what's coming? Yeah. Um, okay, so we were also talking on the Death Wish 3 episode. At some point at the end of the movie, uh, the, the hero's sidekick is using a weapon hitherto unknown to the Saturday Night Freak Show, which was basically a pipe that somehow you could cock the pipe, and by doing so, would fire. It was like a shotgun, yeah. but it was a pipe. Right. You just went with the, and it would mm-hmm. fire a shotgun. It's a looper gun, basically. Okay, so Sean says it's a looper gun. Mike Welch writes in and says it's a zip gun. I thought zip guns were smaller. I mean, this is pretty small in this movie. It's, it's just a, how big. It's a, pi- it's, it's a metal like pipe. It's a foot long, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
It's like two pipes, one inside the other, and when you pull the it, top pipe back on, it the literally other, looks like the guy's running around with a pipe in his hand in the streets. Yeah. Like, I'll go with that yeah. zip gun. That sounds about right. Uh, Owen Johnson says, I never gave the Death Wish films any attention. It just uh, had that grandpa vibe. I'm not saying grandpa <laughs> vibes are bad, but when I was little, I had Stallone and Arnie movies. Let's just say I had no idea who the hell Charles Bronson was at the time. Fast forward to now, I listened to this episode and I thought, maybe I'll give this a viewing. I watched it and my God, yeah. I had a religious experience. Yes. This was like Yo Jimbo, but with a grandpa. <laughs> he destroys yeah. a gang so bad they call in for backup and he kills them too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, it does have a grandpa vibe, but that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Like, no, because that like, makes it more surprising. Yeah. It's just fucking murdering people. Like, especially the going for ice cream is a very grandpa vibe. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. True. yeah. Well, if this is if that was your first Charles Bronson movie, you have a uh, <laughs> ten, to oh. ten to midnight. Ten yeah. to midnight's yeah. got to be the next one, but you got a whole thing to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> His whole canon era filmography. Yeah. Uh, Tony Bradshaw says vigilante movies have turned from Bronson copies into Punisher imitators. Except mm-hmm. the Dolph Lundgren one. And uh, it was also pointed, I forget who said it, that uh, we missed uh, mentioning Peppermint with Jennifer oh, Garner yeah. was a oh, recent. Right. We mentioned it off mic. I know that yeah, we did that. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Charles Bronson tweets said uh, <laughs> yes. Death Wish 3 and Invasion USA have a similar ending, which is the canon way. Yep. Uh, we mentioned that on our show. Yeah, load him out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, Travis Legler says, my favorite Charles Bronson story is how Billy Crystal wanted him to play Curly in City Slickers. Oh, the yeah. story goes that Bronson got the script, called Crystal and said, fuck you. <laughs> you want me to play this guy and I die halfway through the movie? Fuck you. I don't <laughs> die in my movies. And then after Jack Palance won an Academy Award for the role, Crystal saw Bronson that night and thought to himself, fuck who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't care if there's an ounce of truth to that story. That's great. Yeah, uh, that's that is great. apparently, I, I was like, you got to be kidding me, but it's yeah. in Billy Crystal's uh, memoir. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I love nice. it. Yeah. That's great. Add to the legend of Charles Bronson. <laughs> I, I will say Charles Bronson to Jack Palance is not a downgrade, though. Like, no, I think that's no, a no, lateral move. No. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, yeah. that's yeah. pretty good. Like, Can we put Jack Palance in Death Wish 3? Like, yeah, oh, let's oh, do like, it. I'll watch it. Let's switch him out. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll watch that sounds it. sounds good, too. I'm so on board for that. Um, Can you imagine Jack Palance going, it's for jerking off? Yeah. <laughs> the knife's his penis. Yeah. 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 <laughs> except, um, except Jack Palance would be like, ah, <laughs> it's his penis. Yeah. <laughs> That's also my Clint Eastwood Tango. impression. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I was interchanged. Tango. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was thinking about Tango, Tango and Cash. And he has the two rats and in his hand. And you got to put Bronson in that role. <laughs> oh, I forgot to the Tango. Maze. Are we going to move Tango. into a phase of appreciating Jack Palance? <laughs> they you know, like, could be interchangeable. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah. Well, let's yeah. not say that. <laughs> you you deep fake people out there, deep fake these two back and forth. Mm-hmm. Put put Jack Palance in, in fucking ten to midnight, put I'd Charles Bronson in Tango and Cash. <laughs> like I'd watch that. Yeah. Um well, about we also watched a movie called Shoot 'em Up a couple weeks ago. Brett Williams <laughs> wrote in and said, I haven't seen a Clive Owen movie that I remember, but looking at these photos you posted on your social media, I think I might see what Michaela and Holly are seeing <laughs> in Clive Owen. He does look yes. like a young nineteen eighties Mel Gibson. I only have picks to go off here, but seeing him on film might be different. Mm. I would say watch Children of Men if you have not seen it. Like, yeah. that's a, one of the best movies of, you know, the past 30, 40 years, probably. I love Children of Men. I think you should definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. There's a lot of uh, wonders in that movie that mm-hmm. make it a technical mm-hmm. uh, masterpiece. Yep. Uh, you should also see, I mean, obviously Sin City, right? Well, yeah, yeah, Sin City's I mean, I'm surprised you missed that one, but mm-hmm. yeah. He's not in the second one. No, no. also the don't watch the second, second one, one anyway. Fucking terrible! It's a oh bad my movie. God, it's a bad movie. <sighs> That's another episode. That's <laughs> another like, episode. Because I, I was like, man, it might. Okay, so um, <laughs> now we're on to the most exciting moment of our show, which you're going to find out whether we like tonight's movie. Colin, what did you think about this movie? <laughs> I'm sorry, I yelled so loud. <laughs> what do you think about I Madman? Um, I liked I Madman. I was um, I had seen it before. I think I told Holly I was like, yeah, I watched it before, and it didn't um, you know, like stand out from the crowd kind of thing like back then. Uh, but it I feels think, like it could get lost. Well, I think it's because you know when you look at uh, movies that you really remember, they have these standout set pieces, and this movie really doesn't have these big moments, you know, or music to go with it. Yeah, the, so it doesn't have that, but it's like as a piece, you know, when you're watching it, it's like it, it does have. 
I think, a pretty well-written story, except for that detour that we all saw. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, okay, this is unnecessary. 15 minutes in the movie, right. going the wrong way. We know we're well, we what know you're trying going to the do. Wrong way. Right. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, the rest of that and the way it was put together, I think now looking back on it, it was kind of like forward-thinking visually, you know, uh, kind of giving you that what would, what would be the 90s, you know, um, film noir. I don't know if that's the right phrase for a 90s thing, you know, but um, it presaged, I think, like where David Fincher X-Files, you know, in the Saw movies eventually mm -hmm. would go with that. Every word's dark. Um, I thought the uh, bad guy was, uh, again, we we're like anticipating the Candyman or something. Um, the, yeah, there's a lot to be interested in in this movie that I think you should definitely... Uh, I think you should check it out. Yeah, I mean it's a it's one that probably has gotten past a lot of you. Mm. Uh, I think you should go back and give I Madman a shot right now. You can check it out on Tubi. Mm -hmm. um, so that I think or Scream Factory if you want to spend like eighty bucks yeah. looking for their out of print. Oh, is this uh, Scream Factory release? They, yeah. they put they put one out, but it's hard to find now. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Did it come with a slip? I'm sorry, that's yeah. an inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I did. <laughs> yeah, but I would recommend it. I think you should check it out. Uh, Michaela, what do you think of I, Mad Man? Uh, so I'd never heard of this. Didn't know anything about it. Didn't look up anything about it. Went in blind. Um, the title, I was like, this, is, this sounds like a fucking Giallo movie. I was like, just based on the title alone. But, um, I mean, I'm always pleasantly surprised when the story is just based around like a magical book. Uh, like that's like that's something you don't see very often anymore, and I think it's maybe we should bring it back. You know, yeah. I, I like it. I like it as a plot device. Um, it it makes things more interesting, and I think that you know, even though there were moments of this movie that we thought we knew where it was going and that were predictable, it was still enjoyable overall. Um, I go to a lot of estate sales and I was like, wow, I didn't know estate sales could have a trickle down effect this bad to where like <laughs> <laughs> you could, a trickle down curse. Yeah, no kidding. I was like, shit, how much curse stuff have I walked past at estate sales? Yeah. Oh, I mean, you gotta see the possession <laughs> Jeffrey Dean Morgan movie. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Be careful when you go to those flea markets and <laughs> yeah. picking up those possessed items. Yeah. 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 But then it, then I think to the future and I'm like, what stuff am I going to have that's going to be in a future estate sale that people think is going to be cursed or, you know, because like. Definitely the Funkos. Yeah, the Funko Pops are the... <laughs> um, and, like, I wonder if I really dig deep on this movie, if I could make an argument about, like, the level of hoarding a character does <laughs> connects to, like, their morality in the movie. Because, like, the publisher guy, his office was pretty fucking gross. Mm -hmm. And he had, like, the smut posters on the wall and stuff. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I bet I could, like, make an argument that, like, his environment reflects his, like, moral compass. You know so, what I'm saying? Yeah, his... So his environment is a reflection of his soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like yeah. this. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. the killer has the Chinese empty Chinese food boxes, cockroaches, with the cockroaches. things yes. like when we. I know he's like a mad scientist, but when we enter his apartment at the beginning, you can hear drips yeah. and stuff. It just sounds. And gross. then, and then the boyfriend got the clean, pristine. perfect, pristine <laughs> office. Yeah. And then uh, the the leading lady, like it's messy, but she's always cleaning up after herself. So like yeah. she's making an effort to like yeah. be a better person. It's, it's I, like, I can, it's, I can, it's like I can she's on the edge of being yes. a hoarder and being not. Exactly. And so she's on the edge of going back and forth in the stories. I got a thing here. I got a thing here. I expect um, at least... Uh, <laughs> Ten pages All next right. week. All right. I'm on it. Uh, um, double space, dude. It's fine. <laughs> so Cite yeah, sources, no I, Wikipedia. I would I would recommend this because it's not really anything I've seen before, but it's like familiar enough mm -hmm. to be enjoyable. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, it, in parts it does feel almost like a TV movie. It does. I, I don't know why. I got that but feeling a little bit too. Yeah. Some of that lighting when it's just that one light behind yeah, the bad yeah. guys he's walking up felt a little cheap because right. I've done that before. Right. I'm like, I know there's no money behind right. that. So. But I, all things, I think I think it's definitely worth a watch. And good job, Holly, finding something that like, like it was really. I've never even heard of this. You yeah. know, it was Thank really you. hidden, really Thank buried. You. So good job, Sean. What do you think? <laughs> um. Yeah. Good job. Like it's Thank it's you. nice to wow. it is nice to Why sit didn't down. I get a good job from you, Colin. Mm -hmm. Good job, Holly. Thank you. <laughs> Colin had already seen it. That's so. very true. That's very true. Just, I know. Uh, actually, yeah. when I, I text Colin, I was like, I don't want to tell you, but I need your help, so yeah. I need to tell you what my pick <laughs> is. And he was like, oh, I used to own this. I'm like, God damn you! Why did you get rid of it? <laughs> Um, yeah, this was, uh, I mean, it was a nice surprise. Um, again, sitting down knowing nothing about this movie. Um, and when you start out with, uh, a stop motion animated Jackal Boy, um, you have my attention. Right. And so I was in from the beginning. Um, luckily I think all our actors are, um, 
Uh, I feel like they're they're charismatic. They're watchable. Uh, I like them. Um, the story, I mean, it does have its diversions, but it also like I couldn't pin it down. Like I couldn't guess how this movie was going to go. It is familiar in the places they go, but I couldn't like specifically pin it down as we were going along. I like that. Um, it it kept my attention. It kept me guessing. Um, uh, it's um, how do I describe that? Um, yeah, it kept me guessing. It was. It's a nice kind of, I like that they didn't go too magical with it because that w- I think that would have drawn me away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad we saved that kind of t- towards the end. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to if it's going to be magic to bring back Jackal Boy, like I'm for it. Like that was <laughs> I really love Jackal Boy in this. Like he was <laughs> it was really good. I think it's used to uh, very good effect. I think the bad guy looks cool. Like yeah. um, except for a few like story parts like this is like a good movie. The music, I think, is the other thing that like I don't remember it but i also don't think it was in this movie like we had the piano at certain points and it's very low key but um yeah i think everybody's doing a good job um i enjoyed it i was like i said i was just uh very happy with the last 10 minutes of this movie um specifically so yeah i'm gonna recommend it um i'm surprised we haven't heard of this like good job holly uh yeah definitely watch i mad man i had a good time with it it's got a lot in there like it's yeah. you know especially when you listen to the last hour and a half of this podcast like it's it's got some layers to it i liked it awesome. holly yeah, so, yeah, I I had not actually watched this movie all the way through. Um, <laughs> so, all right, now this is what Holly does. <laughs> what point did you get to and go, freak show? And, like, you hit the pause <laughs> button, and, like, that's coming to the freak show. Uh, Jackal Boy. Okay. First- <laughs> <laughs> that's a good choice. That's a good choice. <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, I looked this up. I started to watch it on Tubi, actually, and then I was like, well, I'm not going to do that for the freak show. But, um, yeah, so... I got. I watched the trailer. I was like, "All right, all right." And then I started reading about. It. I'm like, "Okay, okay." And then I started watching. It. I'm like, "Yep, I'm in." Um, so I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I knew what we were getting into. I had read enough about it that I, I knew what to expect. Um, but even still, like watching it play out fully, um, I think it did some some good things with misdirection, and it kept you guessing and kept us on our feet. Um, so I, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Michaela, you'll be interested to know that he was offered, uh, our director was offered the Wraith and passed on it. Oh, no. What? <laughs> <laughs> Big mistake, dude. He, he wanted to do the gate instead. Mm. Well, so, actually, I mean, maybe that well, was a good I was going to say, we got the gate yeah. and then we got the Wraith. Yeah, so, I, yeah, good yeah. decision on his part. Yeah. I was like, I'm okay with it. I think everything it. worked yeah. out in the yeah. end. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I was like, I have to. Which there's, fi- it. there's finally a Blu ray coming out soon, uh, guys. Yeah. I yeah. saw Dear that. listeners, we have a Wraith Blu ray coming. Which we've all been wanting to buy for. Two years now? Yeah, yeah. ever since we all <laughs> yeah. didn't recommend it. We've been yeah. wanting to buy this yeah. movie. <laughs> it's, uh, well, too late, too late for you probably in the future, but right now it's 12 bucks on Amazon. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I was curious, Colin, at one point we saw when she was looking for the publisher, she passed by, like, the porn house, and they were, they were advertising Metal Messiah. Have you seen Metal Messiah? No. Are it's you familiar like with this? First it's m- his first movie. movie. It's a short oh. film. No, it's a, full, it's a full movie, and it is a sci-fi music about an enigmatic metal-skinned stranger trying to stop society's self-destructive obsession with rock and roll. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know. that old tale, <laughs> that old chestnut. <laughs> so I was like, I feel like this is a Colin movie. So I was curious. It's Metal like Messiah. It. So yeah. I was curious you if you had seen it. Double feature it with Metal Storm. <laughs> yeah. And there's gonna be no Metal Messiah in that movie. <laughs> so we might have to look into that one at some point for the future. Um, I promise I won't bring Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I had fun with this movie. I thought it was, uh, it's a good movie. Like it, there, there's some good story there. I love the concept with the book and coming to life. And it's got kind of like a Frankenstein feel, but it's got kind of like a Phantom of the Opera feel, which that was intentional. They, they wanted it to be kind of like Phantom of the Opera. Um, it, they pulled off that like pulp noir feel, and I thought it was really yeah. cool. Like, and the artwork in it like lent itself to that too. It really like, did. Yeah. On the books yeah. and in the publisher's yeah. office because he's got more on the on the walls and everything. Yeah, and I know like the you know the cinematographer, the director, they all like really pulled from watching um, like Outer Limits and Twilight Zone, and they pulled from uh, like Forbidden Planet. They had a lot of influences that I think really came through and worked really well for this movie. So yeah, I thought it was great. Um, did not disappoint, so I definitely recommend I'm Mad Man. It's a good time. All right. no. That means it's free show approved. Mm-hmm. That means by law you have to watch it. Yes, that's true. Uh, if you're listening to this, you have to watch it now. <laughs> you will be compelled. Awesome. Wouldn't that be great if that was like... 
the, yeah. our, the curse of yeah. our show. If you've made it this far, if yeah, you, yeah, if you listen to the whole episode, watch. you are compelled yeah, to go yeah. listen to it. Well, I mean, you know how it is. Like we've spoken about it, so it's going to just start coming up in BuzzFeed, and it's right, gonna yeah, there's going to be three, three <laughs> articles bloody, next week yeah, about bloody, this movie. Cute, yeah. bloody, disgusting. Bloody like disgusting. you know, you should revisit Mad Men. Yeah, like, yeah, we fucking know. Right? <laughs> like, there's going to be another Blu-ray release. Like it's going to happen now that we've talked about it. We Beetlejuiced it. Uh, well, that means next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Kayla, what are we watching next week? We're continuing our tour of blockbuster bombs, oh, and no. uh, we're visiting a movie that's turning 30 this year. Ooh. It is finally time for Cool as Ice, guys. Oh, no! The Vanilla Ice movie. Oh. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Stunned silence around the table right now. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know. Oh, you're I you're about to I'm learn. I'm about to know. Sean, I'm yeah. about to learn. Wait, you didn't know Vanilla Ice was. You've never heard of Cool of Ice? Cool as Ice? I mean, I probably have, but oh it's ringing God. no bells it's right now. Oh, wow. okay. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't yeah, tell yeah. you, and no, I couldn't tell you anything about it. I may not yeah. have ever heard of this. Wow. So there we go. I'm probably going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Vanilla we'll Ice movie uh, is. <laughs> That's it. Cool no title. Ice. No, the yeah. Vanilla Ice movie is next week. Colin says as he dies inside. Yeah. <laughs> I worked at a video store when this thing came out, but I have not seen it, so this will be a Most first time. Most people haven't. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. This is a full hour and a half. Like, yeah, like, a movie. It's like, it's a movie. like 76 minutes. It's real okay. short. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> As it, long it as we get ice, ice baby in it, I mean, like, what more really do you need? I don't remember if that's in it or not, but okay. there's a lot of musical right. numbers in it. But can I just watch <laughs> the Jim Carrey movie. sketch from In Living Color and just be good with that? No, this is a full blown. There is a plot. It is a movie. Right, My, I'm, Michael, I'm, Michael Gross is in it. So okay, I'm interested. Yeah. Well, we'll get into it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. That's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, as always, the basement is going dark.